every city in the desert where the people are coming. Anywhere else in the world, it takes 20 years to set up a functioning community. We did it in months. It is now coming to real life. into the old camp is a major challenge. It's already pre-arranged by the surveyor. I have to put it where the surveyor put it. I'm trying to help uh, Syrian people in this camp. This is the future of Syria. This is your kids. You cannot continue to have this as a lost generation. They're going to the French military hospital. Uh, they have been here for more than uh, nine months. It's a key partner in, in providing medical services in Zatri. And uh, today we're going to discuss about how we're going to replace the tents they had in, in place for, for all this time, for newborns, for deliveries, against some prefabricated units. And we're going to help them with this. And the final number was two caravans, two containers from our side. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's no, no problem. I, th I think two would be enough to replace the tent. Because again, we, we can provide more. Yeah. Uh, we have also the cranes available, so that's all, anytime. The conflict in Syria, in Syria now is really a situation. It's, it's, it's transcending borders, and so we need to um, be ahead of the game as much as possible. So one of the issues that we've got here is that um, what's going on in southern Syria has direct impact of what goes on in, um, into Jordan because southern Syria provides about 80% of, uh, of the refugees. This is a nightmare trying to rescue people from this border because people have walked through the desert for seven kilometres and just imagine you're a woman with say four or five children uh, carrying your belongings. Like how do you carry, how do you walk for four or five kilometres in the desert, in the dark, um, trying to avoid um, being shot at? But the bottom line is how do we rescue people from, who have fled um, like untold uh, uh, humanitarian trauma and disaster that's taking place in Syria and bring them to safety. There is also a photo here which is, um, uh, is of, a, of a little girl. She was shot in the back. She was two and a half years old. And so, yeah, so she's now paralysed from the waist down. And she also had a, um, um, I think there was a, a shrapnel um, in, her, in her head as well. She was just, she wasn't crying, she wasn't screaming, she wasn't com complaining. She was just um, like, yeah, she was just so beautiful. And that's, um, and her, her father just brought her across because there was nothing else to do. So it's, it's a bit tough because you sort of see that, and, but then you sort of like wind forward and sort of say, okay, what does life have in store for this little girl? And like, one in a refugee camp, uh, but then two, what happens next? It's always tough when you see little kids in that sort of situation, because what, what do they know about what's going on in Syria? They're just trying to survive. <laughs> Something I'm trying to avoid in all these situations is to look at the individual. It's maybe brutal to say, but if you spend too much of your own energy on one individual, you don't see the big problem anymore. If I get focused on this little girl, I mean, of course, I could go every day and see that little girl and help her and so on. But there's thousands like this little girl in this camp. So I have to put aside some of my emotions and my willingness to help one. So you can help all? I need to help all. It's a very special day today because it's, um, it's World Refugee Day. I do this job because I love to put smiles on people's faces. I trust you. Now I trust you to Monday. The police has to tell them to, to go back and stop this demonstrating business.